In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. The Easter season is probably larger than our joy. It stretches out and it causes us to stretch out our joy at the resurrection of Christ. And so as we begin, let us set aside anything that separates us from that joy and let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these <coughs> sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sin, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, hope and light of the sincere, we humbly entreat you to dispose our hearts to offer you a worthy prayer and ever to extol you by beautiful proclamation of your praise. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever.
a reading from the Acts of the Apostles. A Pharisee in the Sanhedrin named Gamaliel, a teacher of the law, respected by all the people, stood up, ordered the apostles to be put outside for a short time, and said to the Sanhedrin, Fellow children of Israel, be careful what you are about to do to these men. Some time ago, Tadeus appeared claiming to be someone important, and about 400 men joined him, but he was killed, and all those who were loyal to him were disbanded and came to nothing. After him, King Judas the Galilean, at the time of the census, he also drew people after him, but he too perished, and all who were loyal to him were scattered. So now I tell you, have nothing to do with these men and let them go. For if this endeavor or this activity is of human origin, it will destroy itself. But if it comes from God, you will not be able to destroy them. You may even find yourselves fighting against God. They were persuaded by him. After recalling the apostles, they had them flogged, ordered them to stop speaking in the name of Jesus and dismiss them. So they, so they left the presence of the Sanhedrin, rejoicing that they had been found worthy to suffer dishonor for the sake of the name. And all day long, both at the temple and in their homes, they did not stop teaching and proclaiming the Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. I shall see the Lord's goodness. 
is in the land of the living. Hope in him, hold firm and take heart. Hope in the Lord. Jesus went across the Sea of Galilee, and a large crowd followed him because they saw the signs he was performing on the sick. Jesus went up on the mountain, and there he sat down with his disciples. The Jewish feast of Passover was near. When Jesus raised his eyes and saw that a large crowd was coming to him, he said to Philip, where can we buy enough food for them to eat? He said this to test him, because he himself knew what he was going to do. Philip answered him, 200 days wages worth of food would not be enough for each of them to have a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, the brother of Simon Peter, said to him, there is a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish, but what good are they for so many? Jesus said, have the people recline. Now there was a great deal of grass in that place, so the men reclined, about 5,000 in number. Then Jesus took the loaves, gave thanks, and distributed them to those who were reclining and also as much of the fish as they wanted. When they had had their fill, he said to his disciples, gather the fragments left over so that nothing will be wasted. So they collected them and filled 12 wicker baskets with fragments from the five barley loaves that had been more than they could eat. When the people saw the sign he had done, they said, this is truly the prophet, the one who has come into the world. Since Jesus knew that they were going to come and carry him off to make him king, he withdrew again to the mountain alone. The Gospel of the Lord. We read about the feeding of the 5,000 several times during the year because it appears in all the Gospels and twice in Mark. We get several details in John that we heard today, which we don't get in the others. John gives us 
the names of Philip and Andrew who are trying to figure this out. And Andrew tells us that it was a boy who brought the five loaves and two fish. John also specifies that the loaves were made of barley, five barley loaves. And for some reason, John also tells us that there was much grass in the place. Those details help to make the scene more vivid. For some years, the Archbishop of the Bahamas, Patrick Pinder, had me come to Nassau and give talks. The schedule in our school changed, and so I had to give it up. Though the work was hard, I did manage to explore the island, and right next to the cathedral in in Nassau is the National Art Gallery of the Bahamas, and in it is a painting of the five th uh, of the feeding of the five thousand by a man named Amos Ferguson. Amos Ferguson was originally a house painter and also a very dedicated and committed Christian. He was not trained as an artist, but in midlife, he felt this overwhelming call to paint pictures of biblical stories and scenes of the Bahamas. According to Wikipedia, he often said, I paint by faith and not by sight. In his picture of the feeding of the 5,000 in the National Art Gallery there, a picture that's about four foot by four foot as I remember, Jesus' head touches the top and his feet touch the bottom of the canvas. And his arms are stretched out like on the cross and touch the sides. Above and below the arms are rows of people who are much smaller. Painted on the canvas is the title with several misspellings. It says, Jesus took five bally loaves and two fish. The words two is spelled T-O-O. -O. And for barley, he has bally. That must be the way they say it in the Bahamas. The most interesting misspelling, however, is loaves, which is not spelt L-O-A-V-E-S, but just L-O-V-E-S. Jesus took five bally loves and two fish. May Jesus today take our loaves and loves and bless them and break open our loves and our loaves so that they may multiply and allow us to share our loaves and loves with everyone we meet today. Let us pray for the church and for the whole world. For the church, may God accompany his faithful people through our earth, earthly journey with gifts of heavenly food. Let us pray to the Lord. For world leaders, may the Holy Spirit mold their desires for security and profit into a virtue of charity. Let us pray to the Lord. That the Lord may come to the aid of those shackled by anxiety and dissolution through the heartfelt intercessions of his holy ones. Let us pray to the Lord. That the risen Christ may reveal to the faithful departed the infinite mercy of the heavenly kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. 
Hear these our prayers, O Lord, and in your mercy grant us everything that we need. Break open and multiply our loves and our loaves so that we might feed the world. We ask this in the name of Jesus, who is Lord forever and ever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received of the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, the God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the one we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual bread. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept in compassion, Lord, we pray, the offerings of your family, that under your protective care, they may never lose what they have received, but attain the gifts that are eternal through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to love you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. He never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us and ever pleads our cause before you. He is the sacrificial victim who does no more, the Lamb once slain who lives forever. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim.
Fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Charles, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, St. Manred, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours for At the Savior's command and form the Bhagavan teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, 
we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. peace Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not that you should enter the but only say the word, the soul shall be
Let us pray. <coughs> Keep safe, O Lord, we pray, those whom you have saved by your kindness, that redeemed by the passion of your Son, they may rejoice in his resurrection who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace.